Um, so I'm going to move right into this class pretty quickly because when I taught it last week, my intention was about in 45 minutes to an hour and I tell too many stories. So um, I'm going to just jump right in and thank you very much, Brenda and Jeff, ASA Northwest. Um, fun ASA story. When my husband and I had our shop in North Carolina, I was the president of ASA North Carolina. So I'm super familiar with ASA and um, appreciate being here to speak to y'all today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick and jump right into this presentation. Let me move stuff out of the way here um, so we can get going. All right. And um, a few little house. Um, I don't know what that's about. Um, a few little housekeeping things. Um, which relates directly to this slide right here is um, you do not have to wear your hands out taking notes because we are recording this session and also so um, they'll be putting it on the YouTube channel tomorrow but I'm also going to give you the slides um, and as I'm teaching the class I will be referencing a variety of resources and things that would be helpful to you um, and so we have a resources page created that um, after the class, if you um, text, or you can do it right now actually, if you take out your phone and you send a text to that number and put A-S-A-N-W in the text, um, in the body of the text, it will ask you for your email address. And what will happen is I can email you the link to that resources page, which will have the recording, the slides, and all of the resources I'll be mentioning in the class today. So um, with that, I will put this up again later on in case you are interested in that, then um, feel free to text to get on that list for the slides and recording and all of that. So let's talk about what you came here for. Um, first of all, congratulations, because I can't tell you the number of people that we talked to in January, late January, sometimes February, and they're like, oh my gosh, here I am in 2021 and I don't have my plan together, can you help? And so um, here we are in October, you are ahead of the game. It's perfect timing. It gives you the final quarter of this year to look ahead at 2021. And so I want to give you um, an overall view, some strategies, some tips, some documents to um, help you get going. So in order to put your marketing goals together, you really need to first look at what your business goals are. Um, are you looking to increase revenue? Of course you are most, I mean, most people are looking to increase revenue. Is your primary goal that you just need more new customers or are you really needing to see your existing customer base more frequently? Are you looking to increase web traffic? Do you want more followers on social? So think first about your business goals so that you can bring it down to your marketing goals. Um, that is one step that is in a long line of steps. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. I want to give you some bite-sized chunks and nuggets to be able to help you do one step at a time. But uh, the first thing, uh, as Stephen Covey says, first things first, is let's look at your business goals so that you can um, break that down into your marketing goals. Um, some of the things I'm gonna tell you about, this is not rocket science. I did not create this stuff. It's been around forever, um, but it's solid. And in order to really do a great job with growing your business, you need to take a look at your SWOT analysis. And um, I remember the first time that someone introduced the SWOT analysis to me, I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna do this thing and it's gonna sit in a drawer or in a file, I'm never gonna, really gonna look at it. But we did look at it regularly, mostly on a monthly and a quarterly basis as we were putting our plan into action and then also making it kind of a fluid document that we could update and change as we needed to. So when, um, when some of you probably know exactly what a SWOT analysis is, maybe there are some who are not familiar, so bear with me as I um, explain the SWOT analysis. And by the way, I created a SWOT analysis cheat sheet, a document um, that is gonna be on that resources page that I talked about. Um, that we created that's just a Google Doc. You can print it. 
and write on it and do all the things that you need to do. So you don't have to worry about going to find a template or recreating the wheel and creating your own. I've already done that for you. So the first thing is to really stop and look at what your strengths are in your business. So what are your selling points? What makes you um, special and different from the other businesses, the other shops in your area? Do you have any particular advantages? It might be that um, all of your team is certified. It could be that um, you have moved to a new location or um, you have some new equipment or some new training. So what's unique and special about your business? So make a little list, just some bullet points of what's what you've got going on, what's great in your shop. The weaknesses would be just the opposite of that. What problems do you have? Is morale low in your shop? Um, do you need new, more, uh, better technicians? Um, what are your limitations? Um, do you have no plan? Do you have no budget? Has COVID really wrecked your business this year? What's going on in your business that's a weakness for you? The next thing would be to take a look at the opportunities that you have. Um, maybe like I said, with uh, it being a strength, maybe you've just brought on um, a new service advisor. Maybe you have signed up with a coaching company and you're getting some, some specific training that's going to help your business. Um, it could be that you've got new equipment or whatever it might be. So think about what you have as an opportunity in your business. Um, maybe there's a new neighborhood being built right around the corner from your shop. Those are some opportunities. And then just like weaknesses would be the opposite of your strengths, threats would be the opposite of opportunities that you have. So what's threatening the success of your business? Um, as I mentioned with regard to weaknesses, that could be low morale. That could be um, that there's, um, I forget what it's called, but you know how you can identify the different types of employees that you have you could have an employee that's kind of toxic in your business. So that could be a threat. It could be that a new competitor is opening up near you. Um, COVID could be a threat, right? So think about what threats you have that could interfere with the success or the growth of your business or you reaching your marketing and business goals for 2021. So take a step back, look at your strengths, weaknesses, your opportunities, and the threats in your business. Um, again, I have a worksheet for that that is on that resources page. So you can just print it out, put some bullet points, and you'll have this one document that you can use. Um, moving on from there would be, again, not rocket science, not, I didn't, re, I didn't create this, I'm not taking credit for it, but when you create your goals, they should be SMART goals. SMART, uh, the S meaning specific goals. They are strategic in nature, nature. they're significant. Um, something that you can check off a box and say, I did that. Um, measurable, so for the M, measurable, meaningful, motivational. Uh, you wanna be able, and I'm gonna show you some examples. You want to be able to say that um, you can actually measure exactly what it is that you said you wanted to achieve. Um, moving on to A, achievable. Uh, so you don't want to set your goals so high that it's unrealistic. You want it to be something that is going to cause you to um, be a little bit uncomfortable reaching outside of your comfort zone just a bit. Um, to, that's going to make you have to work for it. And then the R is creating a goal that's relevant to your business, to what you're trying to accomplish. It's realistic and it's results driven. And then finally, um, the T stands for timely. You need to be able to put a timeline on these goals, something that's not, you know, if you don't put a time on it, then you're, you're just continually working on it forever. So you want to be able to say, I need to accomplish these goals by this particular date or time or whatever your timeline is for that. Um, so again, have your business goals in place and then let's break down your marketing goals to help you achieve those overall business goals. Um, so some examples of some auto repair marketing goals would be that you want 10,000 new website visitors um, because as we know, all of the people coming to your website are not going to be customers. So you're kind of doing some backwards engineering here um, 
and ultimately what you're trying to do is get 41 new customers but in order to do that and these are just pretend numbers kind of fill in the blank numbers so we need 10,000 new website visitors who are going to result in 250 new leads and we're going to turn that into 41 new customers so I want to do that over 12 months of inbound marketing so the the effort in your marketing that you're putting out is bringing those customers to you so that could be um, in your marketing plan and we'll unfold this as we move forward in the class could be um, Google ads or it could be Facebook ads or it could be as a result of your SEO work um, so there's there's several different things that you could be doing that bring that traffic to your website um, maybe another example of a um, auto repair marketing goal would be that you want to increase your annual revenue by $150,000 from new customers as a result of digital ads by the end of 2021. Or maybe you want your marketing goal to be that you want to rank number one for the example here, Hammond is actually the city that I live in. So I want to rank number one for Hammond Auto Repair by the end of 2021. These are just examples. Um, I will tell you that every shop is different. Even though you're all automotive repair shops, you all have different customers, different stories. Your community is different. Um, your uh, mission statement or your your vision, your values are different. So your marketing is going to be different from the next shop's marketing. Um, and so when it comes to creating your goal, don't think, well, what's everybody else's goal? Or, you know, what's this one? Or what's that one? Your goal is going to be very different. Um, and that's one of the things that I love about working with automotive repair shops is that everybody has got a different story, if you will. So as we're continuing to unfold or work backwards, right? We've got our business goals, we've got our marketing goals, we have created SMART goals, and we've done a SWOT analysis. The next thing that you need to do is to know and understand your marketing KPIs. So when we had our shop, we did not get involved in the industry with regard to attending conferences or getting educated um, on the management level um, for, a, I want to say maybe four years into having a shop. When we first started working with a coaching company, one of the first things that they taught us was to know our numbers. And it was shocking that we, did, we didn't know the, the main numbers that we needed to know. And so that made a huge difference for us. But those are numbers like car count and your profit margin and your all of those numbers, but there are KPIs, key performance indicators, specifically relating to your marketing. How many people visit your website each month? Do you know that? Um, how many people is your social media profile reaching? How many people, what's the engagement rate? How many followers do you have? How many people are on your email list? What's the percentage of open rates? What's the percentage of click-through rates? Same thing for Google ads. Um, what's your cost per click? Uh, what's your click-through rate? What's your Google ranking for different keywords? Can you tell me specifically about your audience? Um, those are things that you really need to know so that you can truly, um, you, you can't say I've, a, I've, a, I've reached my goal because you didn't know where you were starting. So to get to where you wanna go, you need to know where you are beginning. Um, and so then also, what's your marketing budget? I mean, how much do you have to spend? And I can certainly tell you a number, a figure, a percentage that is the one size fits all approach, but I don't believe in that because again, your goals, your situation, what you're trying to do with your shop is different from the next person's shop. So there is kind of a general rule of thumb that your marketing budget, your annual marketing budget should be around 7% of your overall um, revenue. But here's the problem. That's just the general rule of thumb. There are um, many, many, many businesses who do not use that kind of a budget um, and they're doing just fine. So you really want to look at what you're gonna be doing with your marketing and how you're gonna spend those dollars. If you're, if you're a brand new shop, your percentage of your marketing budget based on your total revenue would probably be a bit more aggressive. 
Whereas if you've been in business for a really long time, you're very comfortable with where you are, you might want to have a smaller percentage of that overall revenue as your marketing budget. So there's, there's a flexibility there. Everybody's budget is different. I mean, we have people that we're running digital ads for and they're spending $500 a month. And then we have people who are spending $3,000 a month just on Facebook and Google ads. So it's very, um, it's very subjective, that number. You know, lots of people ask, what should my marketing budget be? And it's a much longer answer rather than just saying, this is the percentage. Um, so I hope maybe that clears up any kind of misperception or misconception people might have. If you have more questions about that, I'd be happy to talk to you. Look back at what you spent in 2020. And maybe 2020 is a little weird because of COVID or a lot weird because of COVID, but um, if that's not a true, real, solid picture of your business, then maybe go back and look at 2019 just to get an idea of what you were spending. Your um, CPA or your bookkeeper should be able to really help you with that because if you're doing things correctly, all these things are line items in, um, let's say, um, QuickBooks, if that's what you're using, so that you know, I spent this much on my chamber dues, I spent this much on the magazine ad that I had out, I spent this much on Google ads or Facebook ads, or this was the cost of my website or my hosting, whatever it might be. All of that stuff comes together so that you can have a good idea of, okay, I spent this much on my marketing budget uh, this year or last year, or whatever year you selected. And then you can break that out into a monthly fee so you have an idea of, I want to spend, or this is how much I spent each month. So I want to either reduce that a little bit, or I want to increase that a little bit, depending on your goals. Um, I am going to stop and look at questions here in just a few minutes. So if anyone has questions, feel free to drop them there in um, the chat. Um, so then you're moving on, you're ready to develop an action plan. How are you going to accomplish the goal that you created? At first glance, it could be really overwhelming. I really like to take something big and break it down into chunks to make it easier to digest. You don't eat a whole pizza, right? You, slice, you put it into slices and you eat it a slice at a time. So look at your overall annual goals and break that maybe into quarters, right? So by the end of Q1, I want to have accomplished this. By the end of Q2, I want to have accomplished this. The tactics that you choose to, um, to do to help you reach those goals, you might start off and do, um, you might focus first on maybe your website needs updating. You might wanna take care of that first in the first quarter. Once your website is, um, is updated, um, maybe you don't need to do an update to your website. So everybody's thing is different, but maybe you update your website during the first quarter and you focus on that. Second quarter, maybe you're building out your SEO and you're adding some great content so that then you can do ads that's driving traffic to the blogs you're writing or the videos you've created, um, getting people to uh, join your email list. So then in Q3, you might add on some aggressive email marketing. Uh, you know, all throughout the year, you might be growing your presence in your community with regard to networking and chamber events and little league sponsorships or BNI groups, all of those things. Um, so you want to decide, you know, what, what my goal is and what's going to best help me accomplish that goal. And then of course you see their traditional marketing. Um, I don't think that everything comes down to this new age of digital and social and all that, depending on the campaign that you're putting together, you may want to utilize billboards or print ads in the local newspaper or the local magazine. It totally depends on what goal you have created for your business. And also, you know, if you have a brand new business, you, maybe you want to do some direct mail to the, the neighbors around you, the neighborhoods, the folks that don't know who you are or what you're doing. So there's a time and place for all of these different marketing tactics. And um, it's always gonna point back to your SMART goals and that SWOT analysis that you put together. By the way, um, so I have the SMART goals worksheet, um, the 
I didn't tell you that. I told you about the SWOT analysis worksheet and we also have a, um, a SMART goals worksheet and then also a marketing plan, a strategy document. So all of those are kind of worksheets that I'm gonna put on that resources page that I mentioned to you. So if you want that, then um, I'll have that slide a little later on where you can text to join, give us your email address and that way um, tomorrow afternoon is when it should probably come out. You'll get an email linking you to that resources page with all the stuff that you may want or need to do this. Um, the next thing, right? So again, recapping, we've got our business goals, our marketing goals, SWOT analysis. We've done our SMART goals. We're breaking it down into bite-sized chunks. The next thing is to get everyone on board. I can't tell you how many times I've encountered a business where I came into the business because of some marketing piece that I saw, but I got in and the people on the front end of the business didn't know anything about the promotion. So not only do you need to inform your team of the marketing you have going on, you want them to get on board with your goals and your marketing efforts and what it is that you're doing. So educate your team, fill them all in. I don't know about y'all, but we have a monthly meeting here at Shop Marketing Pros. We also have a quarterly meeting and we have an annual meeting. So each of those has a different focus or a different feel. We also have a daily meeting. Uh, we call it our stand-up meeting because, uh, well, now everyone's working from home and they love working from home. But when we were all in the office, we literally stood up in a circle and everybody went around. It was a very fast meeting. That's why it's called a stand-up meeting because you're standing up, you're ready to sit down. We want it to happen very quickly. Um, but uh, there were two things that each person had to do. One, start off with something you're grateful for. And then the second thing was, what are your top two, maybe three priorities for the day? So we were staying in touch with um, our entire team every single morning, just kind of a quick come together. But oftentimes that priority may be attached to a goal that we're working on or something like that. So educate your team, stay in touch with them, make sure that everyone is aware um, there's nothing wrong with full transparency in your business. Uh, when we did that with our shop, with all of our technicians and service advisors, we saw morale change. We saw goals being reached because they felt like they were a part of the team and everybody was sharing um, information. So they knew where we were kind of at all times. So make sure that everyone is updated in your business with regard to your goals, your plan, and who's responsible for what. The other thing we're talking about marketing is to really drill home the fact that even though there's maybe one particular person in your business who's really in charge of the marketing, everybody there in your business is an extension of your business. So everybody is really a part of the marketing team. Um, they are all kind of spokespersons for your business um, and, and you want to ensure that they love where they are so that when they're out and about talking about your business that it's positive uh, so keep them involved keep them updated and educated on what you're doing um, then make it visible you know people it, it's that thing where oh i created my my mission statement but i don't remember what it is because i created this document and it's on a document and it's in the filing cabinet or it's in google docs or it's in dropbox the same thing with your goals and your plan. If it's out of sight, it's out of mind. I have a client that, um, you know, Brenda mentioned that um, Shop Marketing Pros is, an ex is a division of Five Stones Media. So Five Stones Media is kind of our, our original company where we work with local small businesses. Shop Marketing Pros specializes in helping just automotive repair um, shop owners because that's our background. But one of our clients with Five Stones Media is a local State Farm agent. And in her business, in the back room, like the team training room, she has her goals for the, each quarter up on this big, huge wall. And she has people assigned to different parts of those goals and actions. And they meet and look at that on a regular basis. So all the time, her staff is seeing what they're striving for. So maybe include some quarterly benchmarks like I talked about earlier. Have those monthly or quarterly staff meetings specifically so that you can look at 
where you were and where you are and where you want to be. Maybe even consider incentivizing your team so that, um, you know, just one quick example. When we had our shop, this was, this particular moment I'm talking about would have been like in 2005, something like that. And we were just at the beginning of doing the digital thing and we hadn't been collecting email addresses. And so part of our goal was to collect email addresses so that we could stay in touch with our customers via email. And, um, and so this was, you know, obviously now it's almost a critical piece of information to get. So it wasn't back then. And we had to change our service advisors routine, their process, the way that they were doing things. And we had three service advisors. Um, and we wanted this one particular month, we said, we need you to really focus on getting email addresses from the customers. And um, we incentivized them. So we made it like a contest. So whichever one of you collects the most email addresses from the customers is going to um, earn whatever reward. Here's the thing. We knew each one of them. And so we incentivized them based on their interest and what would make them work for it. Uh, one of them, his wife had just had a baby. And so all he really wanted was a paid day off to spend with his family. Um, the other guy was like 19, 21, something, whatever it was, legal drinking age. So I guess he had to be 21. He really just wanted a case of beer. And then the other guy, he didn't care about any of that. He wanted team stuff. So he wanted to win lunch out with the whole team paid for. So um, the thing is, make sure that whatever award that you are putting out there is something that the people that are doing the work care about. Uh, because if I had said, um, you, you know, whoever wins this contest is getting a paid day off, two of them really didn't care about that. Um, that wasn't something that would have made them work for it. So consider incentivizing your team to help reach goals um, and then implement it. Nothing happens by accident. And the only way you're gonna get these things to actually happen is to make it happen. And so what I love to do for myself, but also for our team and then for our own customers is encourage you to literally take out your calendar and put it on your calendar. As we continue through talking about this, you're gonna realize that none of this is gonna happen, and you probably already know this just from history, unless you really make it a priority. So whether you carve out 30 minutes a week, I'm making up the number, whatever works for you, maybe it's an hour a month, maybe it's 45 minutes every other week. Find that time, put it on your calendar, block it out. And also, if you're using Google Calendar, for example, you can set, make it a do not disturb, like nobody can schedule anything for you. And then when you sit down at your desk and look, if your desk is a hot mess or it's a high traffic area, then you may need to shut the door if there's a door to your office. You may need to go to the local coffee shop. Maybe you need to work from home that day. Um, see this phone, maybe you need to put the phone down, face down, turn it off, turn the notifications off so that you have dedicated time with no interruptions. I know that's a joke, I understand, but you can make it happen. Um, and use that time to fill in your plan, to do the work, to schedule social media posts, to communicate with the person handling your website, to plan things out. So break those goals out into monthly and weekly action plans, put on your calendar, set a deadline. And then I love the idea of an accountability partner. Is there someone, maybe there's another shop owner that you're friends with in the industry that you can you know, look around. You're part of ASA Northwest. You're all here interested in the same thing. Maybe you should take a look at who all is on this call. And if one of them is your friend, go ahead, send them a text, send them an email, make a note to reach out to them after this call and say, hey, can we be accountability partners? What are you planning to do in 2021 that you think is not gonna happen? And then they can put it on their calendar to reach out and say, hey, how's this going? Are you getting that done? Maybe you need to schedule a monthly call with that person to just check in and see how things are going. 
Do you have a mentor? Do you have a coach who's advising you? Um, I will tell you that our business went from A to X by simply attending trainings just like this and by having a coach. Um, and so if you are on the fence about that, I would highly encourage you to take the step to investigate that. Maybe that's the thing that you need to implement for 2021 is getting that um, outside perspective that's gonna hold you accountable and give you ideas and things to do to ensure that your 2021 is the best year you've had yet. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, and then don't forget about the progress checks. Don't forget about looking at the whole picture and saying, how are we doing? Checking in with your service advisor, checking in with your, um, if you have someone managing your social media or managing your website or your ads, or your SEO or email, whatever it is, whomever you're working with, hopefully you're getting reports that you take a moment. And we have a lot of clients, we send the reports and they never even look at it. And so I want you to look at it. If you're getting reports for something, take a moment, look at it and see how you're doing so that as you're moving throughout the year, you can make adjustments. Maybe February is a terrible month. Make up for it in March, right? Maybe you know, I, I can tell you when we had our shop in North Carolina, the craziest thing, October was always a terrible month. So obviously the first year we didn't know, right? It was our first year. The second year, we're like, huh, why, why is October so off? The third year, we looked back and we're like, something's just weird with October. Okay, here's what was weird with October. We were five miles away from the North Carolina State Fair. And if some of you, I don't know about the Washington State Fair or whatever's going on up there, but the State Fair had a ridiculous impact on us every single year. On that resources page that I'm gonna connect you to, I have a link to a blog that I wrote specifically about marketing your business with your slow times in mind. It's got ideas in there for what to do when you're slow, when you know you're gonna be slow. And so for our, the state fair time, what we did and it worked, blew my mind. Sometimes you just never know. You create something, you try it and it fails miserably. So don't do it again, right? Or tweak it and maybe try it again. This worked really, really well for us. And what we did was um, we bought a lot of tickets to the state fair. And then we bought a lot of ride tickets so that people could ride whatever roller coaster or Ferris wheel or whatever the thing was. And our promotion started in August and we let people know um, that if you schedule your appointment during the state fair, bring your car and then we're gonna drive you to the state fair and drop you off. We're gonna do the work needed to your vehicle. We're gonna come back and pick you up but depending on how much you spent with us determined how many tickets you got for free. So you wanna to go to the state fair, we would give you the state fair tickets. And then if you spent you know, in the next level, um, then maybe you got free tickets to the state fair and free ride tickets to the state fair. I think we even threw in vouchers for state fair food, right? You know, the fried Oreos and fried Reese's and all that stuff, but um, everybody got a free shuttle to the state fair. So we marketed it as get your car worked on, take your family to the state fair. Don't worry about looking for um, uh, parking spaces and all that stuff. We're gonna drop you off right at the front gate. And we're gonna come back and pick you up. And it went over very well. But the thing was we knew ahead of time that October sucked. So look at your year and say, okay, you know, some people are always slow at back to school. Some people are always slow in May when graduations are happening and, and that sort of thing. So look at your year, know what is what you're expecting, include that in your marketing plan and your marketing goals. Maybe your marketing goal is I wanna have the best October I ever had, even though usually it's the worst month of the year. Do something different from what you've done before. Um, and then check in that might include 
taking a look at your Google Analytics, which by the way, side note, if you're like, what's Google Analytics? Google Analytics is a free tool that tells you an incredible amount of statistics regarding your website. That could be a whole nother class by itself. Um, it is gonna give you an incredible amount of information. How many people are coming to your website and immediately leaving? That gives you a ton of information that you need to know. If you have a really high bounce rate, you need to do something because people are coming to your website and they're not liking what they're seeing. How long are people staying on your website? When they come to your site, what page are they going to? They come in on the main page, then they go to the about us, then they look at your blog, then they look at um, your contact page or your schedule page. So what traffic flow is happening and where are people coming from? Are they coming from Google? Are they typing in your name directly? Are they coming from Facebook? So track your results so that you know how you are doing. Then you need to celebrate. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. We have, I'm looking at it, we have a little bell in our office, even though everybody's working remotely, so we don't use it anymore, but we have a little bell in here. So anytime there's a success or a new client or something really cool and awesome does, we ring the bell. And it's just, it's just, it's just a fun moment that we all stop and celebrate what's happening. Um, take your team out. We just took our team out for lunch two Fridays ago. Uh, it's the Mexican restaurant, had a great time, offer bonuses. Um, maybe do a team outing. We once, um, not a couple of years ago, we went to um, not paintball, laser tag. We, we took the team out to a laser tag place. Maybe in your shop, you want everyone working for this goal. And when you achieve this goal, you're going to buy some new piece of equipment that your shop needs and your technicians want. So you fill in those rewards, however makes sense or works for your shop. Do what's going to what's going to cause morale to improve and make people feel good about what they have done, what they've accomplished. All right. I love Dory um, or Ellen really is who it is. And she just says, just keep swimming. If today sucked or this month was terrible, then by the way, I apologize if uh, saying that sucked offends anyone. My mom would, I'm 47 years old. She would let me have it if she heard me say it not but just keep swimming. I know, Brenda, you're laughing, but it's true. Um, she just fussed at me about something like last week. I'm like, mom, I'm 47. Anyways, just keep swimming. If things didn't go well, and I have an eight, my son turned 18 years old today. Um, and, um, and I keep telling him when something goes wrong, I'm telling him, Peyton, you need to fail forward. And he's like, that's so dumb. I don't even know what that means. And of course we talk about it and explain it. And um, so just fail forward, you know, take your failures from today and learn from them and move on. Um, and just don't forget that, that rule of, that scientific rule of inertia. Sometimes it just takes a lot to get something going. You know, that cruise ship, that, that engine is just going and going. And you're like, are we ever gonna pull away from the dock? Once it gets going, um, then you're in good shape. So just do what you can to, to get moving and keep moving. So here's that slide as we are wrapping up and to move over to questions. If you want to get um, that email that links you to the resources page um, with the class slides, a link to the recording, which Brenda's gonna put this on YouTube so you'll have that anyway. But if you want the slides, if you want all the resources that I talked about, um, those worksheets. Also, I always mention these two books. I don't know if you can see. They Ask, You Answer is a brilliant book that helps you develop your content marketing. Um, and it's, it's, it has changed the way we develop content for ourselves, but also for our customers. And then, um, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Um, I will have both of those books linked to um, that resources page. Building a Story Brand helps you put together your messaging. What are you saying? How are you saying it? Are you confusing people? Are you being super clear? So all those resources will be on that resources page. And to get that, just send a text to that number. 
um, and put A-S-A-N-W in the text. And then tomorrow afternoon, you will get, um, get an email with, that links you to all of those awesome things. So I just want to say thank you um, again to ASA Northwest, both Brenda and Jeff. I, I know we've been talking about putting together class for a long time. It was my pleasure to be here and I thank you so very much. Um, and then of course, just lastly, if you need help with marketing, that's what we do. We are shop marketing pros. My husband and I both together, we've owned multiple shops um, and, uh, and we'd be happy to chat, answer any questions you might have. Um, my email, I should have put it on here, is um, kim at shopmarketingpros.com. So you can shoot me an email if you have any questions. And I do see there are some questions here. So let me stop sharing my screen and then I'm gonna jump over here and see what's going on. And then I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Jeff and or Brenda, while I look at these questions. Um, okay, so I see people are answering. Um, search engine optimization. So the quick short answer for that, um, by the way, on uh, shopmarketinguniversity.com, we have a free SEO class. I think my husband just put that up yesterday or today. Um, and search engine optimization is where you are essentially making sure that your website, when people are searching for something, that your website is ranking high enough that they see it and click through to your website. So there's a lot of optimization that happens on the back end of your website, even the structure of your website, the way it's built. So like the two by fours of the house that you're building, um, the chassis that you use for the vehicle, same kind of thing when it comes to a website, the, the nuts and bolts of that website and the words, the pictures that you use, there's an enormous amount of um, stuff that happens on the back end of a website to ensure that your website is optimized for the search engines. Um, so thank you, Carl, uh, for the birthday wish to my son. That's awesome. He's, um, he is, he's 18 today, as I said, and he has joined the Army National Guard um, when he was 17. He's already been through basic training, but he's a senior in high school. So we're super proud of him for serving our country and, and, and doing all that. But thanks for the birthday wish. Any other questions or Jeff, Brenda? Um, well, thank you, Kim. Really appreciate you being on and great presentation. Really enjoyed that. Uh, sorry for the background noise. The landscapers are here blowing off the deck today. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, thank you so much. And don't forget next week or in two weeks, uh, October 29th, uh, Steve Beck, dynamic speaker. Um, he, his topic is going to be individual leadership and what does it mean? So we hope to have you back on Lunch and Learn uh, in two weeks. And Everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, Kim.